And I also don't really want to spoil this movie, but Kate Blanchett is woman, and she is not neutered in this movie. Her power is there. Any little girl would look at her and be like, I want to be her. That's the best your little girl impression I can do. What's up guys, welcome to Boss Level 8 where we make fun of movie critics, we watch the new Jack Black film. I, I know I'm saying the Jack Black film, but you know, Kate Blanchett is in this too. She's famous, right? <laughs> the house with the clock in the walls, based on a thing I've never read, because I'm not a young adult. We're gonna take a look at Hope Madden's review of this movie. I don't even know how you give a bad review of a weird movie like this, but we'll see what happens. We're gonna react to it together. And uh, I've never read this before, so it's our first time, all of us. If you've never been here before and you wanna be one of our beloved haters, hit the subscribe button and the little bell right next to it so you can get notified every single time we have a new video. Now let's read this review. Eli Roth made a family film. That's weird. Actually, that should have been one sentence. Eli Roth made a family film that's weird. And then you could just finish the review there. It was pretty accurate. <laughs> Although there is certainly something juvenile about the filmmaker's work in general. That seems like a compliment now. I guess like you're insulting all of the other movies except this one. Maybe he's just moving up in the world, I don't know. He finally fit the square into the square hole. It's a baby toy joke, stop trying to make it gross. Yes, the hostile director and Cabin Fever, The Green Inferno, and any number of other hard R flicks indulges a sillier aside with his big screen adaptation of John Belair's 1973 novel, The House with a Clock in Its Walls. It is a bit of a departure, but I guess after you've made a bunch of stuff that's all like that, you, know, you might get bored and be like, let's try something new. It doesn't always work. I mean, that's certainly the case. I mean, there were a lot of people who did not like the direction Metallica went at one point. But they went back, because they failed. Fuck you, Metallica. <laughs> Set in a mid-50s slice of Americana, New Zebedee, Michigan, the film lazily crosses Spielberg with Tim Burton by way of Nickelodeon. I don't even think you can lazily do that. I think you really have to try hard to do all three of those things. You know, just gonna lazily and casually take two of the greatest and most well-loved directors that are nothing alike and then uh, just combine it with you know one of the most beloved cable children's networks yeah that that sounds tough so well done Eli Roth <laughs> Roth and screenwriter Eric Kripke streamlined Bel Air's charming prose some updates are sensible although neutering the novel's image of powerful women is not one of the more courageous or welcome choices the filmmakers made now I haven't read the novel, so I can't fully understand what he's talking about. And I also don't really want to spoil this movie, but Kate Blanchett is woman, and she is not neutered in this movie. Her power is there. And you're like, damn. Any little girl would look at her and be like, I want to be her. That's the best your little girl impression I can do. My voice doesn't go that high because I haven't been neutered. I should have been in this movie. They entirely missed the novel's tone, amplified with intermittent illustrations by the great Edward Gorey, subdued, wondrous, yet melancholy. These are not adjectives used in conjunction with the work of Eli Roth. That's fair. I don't know, I feel like subdued and melancholy doesn't always work out for a children's movie. It might have been a good change. Try to reach, you know, a more broad audience, you know? Instead of like, the one kid in the corner who doesn't feel like joining in on the school project. Not everybody can be Wednesday Adams, you know? Just Christina Ricci. What he substitutes instead is colorful, artificial, sloppy fun. I don't want to comment on how gross that sounded, so let's move to the next thing. I feel like I've already attacked the melancholy and subdued thing, so the sloppy fun just kind of made me uncomfortable a little bit. Black, more or less revisiting his role from 2015's Goosebumps, charms exactly as he always does. Watching the incandescent Blanchette slyly deliver lines and easily steal scenes from Black and anybody else who happens to be present is a joy. I feel like Jack Black doesn't need to be anyone but Jack Black. I feel like he could be. If he was given the chance to do something drastically different, I think he'd kill it. But uh, but we don't we don't we don't want that. We want him. So it's fine. If he's like reprising his role according to you from Goosebumps, then yeah. Also, Kate Blanchett stealing the show is is not rare. 
We knew that was gonna happen. So that's all a fair assessment. Vaccaro isn't given much opportunity. His is a story about grief and loneliness, or maybe it's about embracing your inner weirdo. Roth can't seem to decide, and he's far too sidetracked by the demonic jack-o'-lanterns, topiary griffin, and inexplicable room of carnival freak show dummies to pay attention to the story. Good use of inexplicable in this movie. <laughs> what, why do you... Why not inexplicable demonic jack-o'-lanterns? It's all pretty inexplicable. Like, Jack Black and Kate Blanchett in the same movie is inexplicable. Jack Black in a kimono is inexplicable. But, but, but we understand. It's just so weird. You went to a movie called House with a clock on the walls and found out it wasn't a metaphor. And then you're like, what's with this room full of dummies? I don't understand. Come on, I want some synergy here. There is utterly forgettable fun here, mainly thanks to Black and Blanchett. You just complimented both of them and then said that, that it was utterly forgettable. But you remembered it enough to compliment them. I don't understand that. That's like sending thank you notes a week after your wedding and just like forgetting that people were there. Like just, but still sending them. Like, But the intended audience is a little tough to gauge. Unless you go into a theater and look around and see all the young people enjoying the movie. And then you go, oh. It's for them, but you probably saw it with a bunch of critics who are all like 70 years old and weren't the intended audience. I'm just saying. Things are likely a bit too slow moving and eventually too wicked for the very young, while teens and adults may be bored by the lack of logic or what passes for humor. You can't bring up logic again. That's just not allowed. Clock in the walls, not a metaphor. We went through this. There's actually a clock in the walls. Stop looking for logic. The second you see Jack Black do magic that isn't with his sultry voice, you should know that this isn't supposed to be logical. Still, if you have a 10 year old who wants a seasonal scare that's not too scary, here you go. Look who figured out the audience! <laughs> it took you like three sentences. I don't know who this is for. This is who it's for. <laughs> it's like it's like figuring out what to do with something while you're doing it. It's like using a fork for the first time. Be like, what do I do with this? You know, that's the sound forks make. If you haven't seen the movie yet or even the trailer, we'll put a link in the description so you can check it out. If you have seen the movie, let us know what you thought of the movie in the comments and what you thought of this person's review. If it's your first time here, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the little bell right next to it and get notified every single time we have a new video coming out, which is a lot. At least every week, and that's a lot. Yeah. Until we see you next time, geek out and game on.